Good afternoon, everyone, or I guess good morning, depending on where you are right now. And welcome to the combined Datum Global Mapper webinar. Very exciting uh, topic today. Uh, we're going to have the opportunity to introduce a brand new extension for Global Mapper. Um, the folks up at Datum up there in Alaska have done some hard work building a nice little add on tool. You're going to see uh, how it works and what it does within the application. We're going to have an opportunity to demonstrate that. Um, I'm joined today by Alyssa Oder, uh, Technical Support Manager up at Datum. Good morning, Alyssa. Good morning and welcome everyone. Glad to be talking to you today. And how is the weather up there in Anchorage today? Well, it's warmer than a lot of places in the country right now. <laughs> I would say that. I think we you actually sent... had a little rain yesterday, and we'd really like that snow that we seem to have sent to everyone else. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, you can take some of that back any time now. We've got a lot of it to spare here in Maine, so uh, we're, we'll, we'll send it back up your direction, hopefully. Uh, so, uh, again, I'm joined by Alyssa. My name is David McKittrick. I work here at Blue Marble Geographics. I'm Senior Application Specialist. Um, today, as I said, we are excited to introduce this new extension. Um, we know there's a variety of <laughs> attendees today. We know there are some folks who are coming to this presentation from the Global Mapper side. This is going to be a great opportunity for you to learn what the, the uh, Datum products are all about. Alyssa is going to be introducing those a little bit later. For those of you who are coming to this presentation from the Datum side, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of Global Mapper prior to uh, introducing the extension itself. I'll keep it brief. I'm but by way of introducing the, the, that technology, um, I'll give you, again, a very brief overview of that application. A little bit of housekeeping before we get going here, uh, making sure my uh, my slideshow is actually working. Um, those of you who have not attended webinars uh, before, our Global Mapper webinars specifically, um, we obviously can speak to you. Hopefully you're hearing our voices right now. Unfortunately, we can't hear you. Uh, just that's the nature of the way this technology works. So. Um, I, if you have a need to interact with us, if you have any questions, or if you want to uh, comment on anything that's being uh, covered today, you will notice on the right side of the screen a little panel, um, and it should look similar to what you're seeing on the screen right now. This is the, uh, the questions panel. You'll notice where that big, bold, yellow arrow is pointing. You can ask a question in there. If it's a question of, of, uh, based on some of the content I'm delivering, or certainly some, some of the content Alyssa will be delivering, feel free to ask. Uh, both Alyssa and myself um, are monitoring the questions, and we will hopefully have a chance to answer those as we go through the presentation. Um, if we don't, um, those questions are actually sent to us offline, and we have your contact information from your registration. We'll make sure we follow up if the questions are a little too technical for our direct your questions to the right people. So don't be afraid to use that questions tab again. We'll keep that, that window up here and keep answering those questions as they come in. Um, the agenda for today, well, again, for those of you who are fairly new to the Blue Marble slash Global Mapper site, I'm going to give you a very quick overview of our company. We're a very small company. As I alluded to a minute ago, we're here in the state of Maine. I'll give you a little brief introduction as to what we're all about. Specifically, the product we're going to be introducing you to is Global Mapper. And again, I'll give you a brief overview of Global Mapper, what Global Mapper is, and a little bit of a demo as well, some of the functionality that's in there. I'm going to hand over the reins to Alyssa, and she's going to do the same for uh, the Global Mapper cr uh, crowd. Uh, she's going to introduce Datum um, and the uh, products that they produce. Um, she's also going to introduce the Summit Evolution platform, and then she's going to kind of bring the two sides together, if you like, um, connecting Summit to Global Mapper. What does that entail? What does it involve? And what does it give you as a user? She's going to introduce the capabilities uh, of Summit within Global Mapper. And she will also provide some industry examples. I think without the benefit of a safety net, I think she's actually going to show you a live demo of that as well. So fingers are crossed that that goes well. But as, a, as you, just by way of kind of a disclaimer, live demos are live demos. <laughs> you never know what will happen. But we're hoping for the best. Um, so my first bullet, uh, introducing Blue Marble Geographics, a little bit about our company. Well, we are a main based geospatial software company. We've been in business. We, we've been saying over 20 years. It's actually a lot over 20. I think we're almost 25 years now. Um, we have been recognized for quite some time as the industry leader in the development of geodetic technologies. Uh, in other words, if you've got location-based information, uh, we have tools that can help you manage that very, very efficiently. Um, our key products include uh, geographic calculator, and as its name implies, that product is intended to uh, perform calculations based on your geographic data, uh, coordinate conversions, uh, uh, coordinate transformations. I probably should say datum transformations in here as well. We do a lot of the kind of the inner 
math behind uh, converting between different systems, and that's been the foundation for our company for many, many years. A few years ago, we had the uh, uh, opportunity to acquire a new product, uh, well, new to us. It's been around for uh, about 15, 16 years now, and that's a product called Global Mapper. Global Mapper has uh, gained a worldwide audience. Um, we've never actually figured out exactly how many that worldwide audience is, but it's in the tens of thousands of dedicated users in many industries and many uh, types of organization who use this uh, for its ability to, to work with multiple types of data, uh, do a lot of data processing. It's got a lot of analysis capability. It is, as the bullet says, a full-featured de uh, desktop DIS software. Um, we like to think it's fairly easy to use as well. So um, that's kind of an overview of who we are as a company. Again, we're a very small company. We're uh, situated in, uh, just south of the state capital in, uh, of Augusta here in Maine. A um, little bit about Blue, uh, Global Mapper itself. Again, for those of you who have never uh, worked with this software, never encountered this software, uh, Global Mapper is uh, affordable. It's a, a low-cost, easy-to-use GIS software application. Um, if you were to ask me to define it or distinguish it uh, from other applications, I, I think one of the defining characteristics is the volume of data that can be used within the software. Uh, we usually kind of round it off to about 250 formats. I'll show you that in just a second. But basically, any geospatial data can be ingested by Global Mapper and then ultimately export it as well. So simply as a data conversion tool from one obscure format into another, Global Mapper excels in that, uh, in that application or in that workflow. It does offer a number of drawing tools for creating or editing map features. Um, I say a number, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, lo a long list of drawing tools. Alyssa is going to be actually using some of those drawing functions a little bit later in some of her scenarios or an adaptation of some of those drawing functions. But digitizing and interacting and working with vector data is an integral part of the application as well. Um, we have a lot of analysis tools. Um, the development of Global Mapper over the last three or four years has really escalated. Um, we've added uh, a lot of analysis capabilities. We're working a lot with, with a lot of the 3D data sets, specifically LiDAR. We've just introduced a LiDAR module, the add-on functionality for processing LiDAR uh, and generating terrain surfaces, things like that. Um, so there is a, a, a pretty robust uh, analysis component of Global Mapper. Over and above just simply supporting data, we can actually do a lot of analysis as well. Um, and by way of summary, as far as the definition is concerned, we like to think the uh, Global Mapper has what we would consider to be just the right level of GIS functionality uh, that would satisfy both well, who, those who would consider themselves GIS professional and even mapping novices. We get folks who call us every day thinking uh, with the questions about uh, the basics of uh, getting started with, uh, with GIS or making maps, and Global Mapper is an ideal application for that. So I'm going to show you very quickly, I'm going to switch my view to the actual application itself. And as you can see, I've actually imported some data already. This is just some, some imagery. And again, not meaning to the application. Well, I mentioned. And I'm still visible um, within the geospatial environment can be worked with in Global Mapper. You can ingest that data and import those files. Another characteristic of Global Mapper is its access to online data sources as well. Access to So, for instance, if I open up my imagery set, you can see I've got access to multiple types of imagery. We've got Landsat in here. We've got NAEP, which is the National Aerial Imagery Program. We even have a worldwide imagery set that gives you access to imagery worldwide. These, these are streaming services. These are uh, online data sources that you can access directly from within the application. And ultimately, you can uh, uh, save some of those files locally if you need to work in a particular project area. So. Uh, key components of the application. I alluded to the uh, digital. Um, we have a long list of and again, Alyssa is going to show you some of these a little bit later. Very quickly, by way of inter introduction, you can see I have a tools for creating areas, rectangles, lines, 
effect. We even have Kogo, uh, the ability to generate features based on coordinate geometry input. So if you know the, the dimensions of a feature, you of clicking on the map. Obviously, we're tracing something here. need to do with that uh, uh, with that tool so I'm going to cancel this right now should also show you if I have my digitizer selected we also have a number of tools for creating specialty uh, geometric features circles rotated rectangles rectangular lines or areas etc so long long list of, of vector processing tools I guess would be the best way to summarize this I am glancing over the questions and I'm looking at a couple that have come in already. <laughs> this is, we've got a word of congratulations. Uh, congratulations on the marriage. Uh, that's great, the marriage between Blue Marble and Datum. Uh, I don't know where we're going on our honeymoon, but I hope it's warmer than Maine or Anchorage. Um, also, we have a question about some online courses available. Uh, Alyssa, I'll let you address that from your side. Uh, certainly for a global mapper, we are in the process of developing a lot of educational resources in terms of getting up to speed with the software. We have on-site training. A couple of weeks from now, I'm going to be in Washington, D.C., delivering a training class down there. Um, uh, we have some online materials you can actually download from our website. I say online, but they're actually self-driven training materials. You can download those as well. That's kind of a work in progress. So there are a number of options as far as training on global mapper is concerned. Uh, Alyssa, I'm going to hand over to you. If, uh, are there any options for training in the uh, datum? environment? Uh, yes, David. We, we tend to send a person in person to do training for Summit Evolution, um, but we can also do training over something like this webinar now. Um, it's usually scheduled by the client, between the client and Datum, so that we can tailor that training just to you and what you need. Do you need training in Summit Evolution or perhaps only the connection between Summit and Global Mapper and we would tailor that to your needs. So you should probably contact us if you would like to have training in Summit Evolution or Global Mapper together. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, sh I'll show a contact email address at the, uh, at the end of today's presentation, so uh, uh, certainly you can use that email address for, uh, for more information on, on the training options. Good questions, and keep those questions coming in, folks. Uh, I mentioned, again, during my introduction, one of the uh, kind of development priorities or the main focuses of our development uh, team right now is working with LiDAR data. Uh, right here on my toolbar where my cursor's moving is a, a toolbar of LiDAR processing functionality. Uh, those of you not familiar with LiDAR, it's basically a, a vector point data set. Uh, each point has an X, Y, and Z value. used for terrain modeling. Uh, we have tools for generating, automatically generating ground points, automatically generating buildings, uh, and uh, doing extra a full picture of what Global Mapper is all about. Uh, LiDAR is a major part of, 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 the, of the application. Um, I sh it would be have a Podcast version, but um, you can see I've got a little bit of terrain here underneath my imagery, and um, certainly we can view that um, and work with that data in 3D. So again, that's a integral part of the uh, of the application. Um, by way of segue, if you like, by way of transitioning to Alicia, I should also mention that although Global Mapper is a application, and obviously many people use it in that context. Um, with recent releases, we have offered the opportunity to enhance or extend the functionality. Now, there's a couple menu right now, and within the help menu, uh, you'll notice a module extension license manager. Uh, I'll bring this up now, and I'm sure we'll, re we'll be referring to this a little bit later, but you'll see two, two windows over here. Uh, on the left side are modules that Global Mapper, or that sorry, Blue Marble has built software. You can add to the LiDAR functionality by purchasing the LiDAR module as well. We also have another OTF module that's an option in here. On the other side of the window, 
use Global Mapper as a standalone application, there are a couple extensions in here already. One is my overview extension, which is this little button in my toolbar, a very simple one that we engineered just to show people what extensions are all about. We also have a Coast extension, which is an extension we developed specifically in partnership with the University of Maine system to do, uh, I better get the story right, to do an analysis of the cost uh, associated with uh, coastal flooding. A uh, very interesting little application that factors in property values along with potential sea level rise and generates some very interesting results. That coast extension is also something you can use free of charge within the application. Um, what's missing in here is the datum extension, but this is where we are giving the opportunity to developers to add to the functionality of Global Mapper. And as you'll see, um, the folks up at Datum have actually built their own little toolbar that fits within the framework of Global Mapper and allows you to interact with their application. So um, the extension manager in Global Mapper is essentially the bridge uh, between uh, Global Mapper. Now, with that, I am going to, hopefully I can figure out the right buttons to push here, I'm going to switch and have Alyssa uh, introduce the extension. So hopefully you're seeing her screen. I think we have the, my screen showing now and I'm going to start with a slideshow presentation but then we'll, we'll switch over to the actual applications. So we'll start here and we have a little agenda too. I know you already talked about what we're going to be discussing, but we'll talk about our company and then go on to talk about our Global Mapper to Summit Evolution Extension. And so Datum Systems International has been around since 1987 and we our main purpose is 3D digitizing. So we have, in the old days, we had a an interface log and analytical stereo plotters, but for quite some time, time now we've had a digital stereo plotter called Summit Evolution. And we also have other products such as Landscape for LiDAR editing and the Capture products connect Summit Evolution to CAD or GIS packages such as Blue Marble Global Mapper. So that's what we're going to talk about. And we have glamour shot of the people at Datum will move on. We have over 500 clients in more than 70 countries around the world. So they're mostly using our Summit Evolution product with Capture and now they can use Capture to Global Mapper. Um, why would you want to connect Summit Evolution to Global Mapper? Well, this this is a little bit of a concept picture here. Summit Evolution would be on one of your screens, and this is a stereo application. So if you have stereo imagery to show in Summit Evolution, you can see it in stereo, and this means that you can put the cursor on the ground, and when you put the cursor on the ground, now you have a 3D communicate that coordinate to the other program and actually digitize in 3D. And so that's what we're doing with Global Mapper. You would have Global Mapper on your other screens. And you can edit, you can digitize in 3D. And you can see your vector data in 3D superimposed on the Summit Evolution side. So Summit Evolution comes in three levels depending on what kind of applications you need to do with it. So there's the professional level, feature collection, and light. And this you should really discuss with your sales representative for, for Datum because you may or may not need the professional version. The professional version would be full function and it would allow you to do some orientation of those images that you're bringing into Summit Evolution. Feature collection is in the middle. It would allow you to import projects and read projects that maybe another Summit professional had created earlier and it allows you to do all the digitizing functions. And then light is the lowest cost system. 
but again, all of these are going to be able to connect to Global Mapper. So Summit Light would read in projects that Summit Professional had created somewhere, you know, on another workstation, or perhaps you purchase your projects from someone who has Summit Professional, or you can import projects from other third-party stereo plotter systems, and all that can be done with light, and you can do your basic digitizing and editing with light as well. And so you do need some kinds of specialty hardware. Uh, our website here, if you go to www.datum.com and you click on the support menu and then configurations, you'll find a full list of the kind of computer that you need to run Summit Evolution. And then we also, for the stereo viewing, we use the NVIDIA 3D Vision Kit. And if you have Summit Professional or Summit Feature Collection, you may also want a dedicated 3D digitizing device. A couple of them are shown here. Um, there are several options for that. And then Summit Light and actually any of the versions can use a regular system mouse as a digitizing device. And it can control the elevation setting in Summit Evolution 2. You can actually connect two system mouse devices if that's if you have some at light and take advantage of up to ten buttons with two system mice. Alyssa, I just see a question coming in here. Uh -huh. I think this uh, maybe is something that you can address. Uh, question is. Uh, will the extension work with older versions of Global Mapper? Um, uh, just to kind of put it in context, we, we've uh, reached version 16 of Global Mapper. Actually, 16.1 was released uh, just about a month ago. So, question about uh, compatibility with older versions. Uh, yes, we are compatible with 15, I think 15.2 and up, although. I would suggest using the most recent version of 16.1, and the reason for that is that our software engineers really work together very well, and we're constantly helping each other to enhance each other's products so that our applications will work together very well, and that's the reason I'd suggest using the most recent version of Global Mapper and of Summit, but Summit Evolution. Yeah, and I can... Yeah, sorry, Alicia, I can I can kind of concur because uh, I know those of you who have been using Global Mapper may be familiar with the fact that this is a continually evolving uh, product, and uh, you know if if you want the latest enhancements, you are entitled to those with within the current version. But we're not really going to do anything with previous versions. So you know if there's a new data set comes along or a new version, so I think I think we're in agreement. Well, Alyssa. Yeah, that's a good question. Thank you. Um, let's talk about the imagery that you get for Summit Evolution. Um, most product or most projects that people want to work with are in stereo, and so that's typically aerial imagery from an aerial camera. But it can be RPC satellite imagery or specialty sensors such as the ADS-40 or ADS-100 now, and the Vision Map A3 camera, all of these sensors are acceptable image formats or create acceptable image formats to make a stereo product that will work in Summit Evolution. Um, we can also just view orthophotos and if you have a DEM with your orthophoto we can use that DEM to track elevation for the cursor because once it's an orthophoto is not a stereo product or project and you can track elevation based on a DM. So most types of imagery are going to be perfectly acceptable to create a project in Summit. And some people ask, well, where can I get this if they're not a photogram photogrammetric firm already? Um, they can typically buy this imagery from either their government or their local private aerial photogrammetry companies. And, of course, the satellite imagery is available from the satellite vendors, and that's easily accessible for purchase on the web. All right, so we want to connect Summit Evolution to Global Mapper. 
and it's a pretty simple pro process. When we do our installation of our software, we check if you have Summit Evo or Global Mapper version 15.2 or higher on the machine. And if you do, we'll just install our extension. And then it's your choice to use the extension or not. And so again, here it says 15.2, but I would suggest that you use And then once you install software, you'll notice that when you go to that pull-down menu that David showed earlier to the module extension license manager, you'll notice that there's a datum capture for Global Mapper extension available. And when it's checked on, then you get our toolbar. And so you would see the datum toolbar added to your Global Mapper environment. And it has our settings tools and our drawing tools on it. And so now, in, on the Summit Evolution side, you'll have a 3D view of the area. And if you have a vector file loaded in Global Mapper, you'll see these vectors superimposed onto the 3D view of Summit Evolution. And so our tools are essentially settings that you might make in Global Mapper to set up how you want to draw something. Of course, at the same time, all of your your features in Global Mapper that you used to setting are still available to you. But you might want to, for example, place spot elevations with Summit Evolution because you can set that cursor on the ground and digitize the spot elevation in 3D. And so you would use the datum spot x command to do that. So wherever datum is determined that we need a 3D command, we've added that for you to go ahead and digitize in 3D. Alison, yeah. another question. I just want to read them as they come in. Uh, I've got a question come in here about uh, acquiring Global Mapper. The question is specifically, does datum sell Global Mapper? I'm not sure if that's uh, something you want to answer or if I need to answer uh, that one. Well, sure. Um, no, we don't sell Global Mapper. You would buy Global Mapper from Blue Marble. Uh, yeah. But then, again, if we see that it's installed, then we'll install our extension for it. And, and to, just to kind of continue that, I mean, uh, the Global Mapper is uh, available. You can download it directly from our website, uh, purchase a license right on our website as well, and uh, activate the software remotely using an order number. So it's a very, very simple, painless process. I think it's about a 100 megabyte uh, download uh, for the full installation. So, yeah, and obviously for the extension to be functional, you need to have uh, both software titles installed on your, on your machine. Right, and I'll add to that that you should install Global Mapper first and then install Datum software. Okay. Great question. Um, we can also add our digitizing tools to the Global Mapper right-click menu. That's an option if you'd like to see our tools on the normal Global Mapper right-click menu, then you just check on a setting and it, they'll appear here at the bottom of the menu. Uh, just while the slide's transitioning again, follow-up question. Um, if customer has Summit Evolution, then purchases Global Mapper, do they have to uninstall Datum? Uh, indicated just by way of the order of installation you had mentioned before. Yes. Anytime you change the Global Mapper version or install a new one, you'll need to reinstall the Datum software. And that's just so that it can go look in your registry and see what version of Global Mapper is there, if it's there. And then when it sees it, it will install the extension. So yes, when you install our software or uninstall or install a new version, it first uninstalls and then reinstalls. And at that reinstall point, it checks what's on the computer and, and changes the installation accordingly. Does that answer that question well enough, do you think? I think that's exactly what you wanted to hear, yes. Okay. Uh, and again, okay. we've opened the floodgates now. Here's another another couple. Of, somebody asking if a GM server license would work. Um, I'll answer that one. I'd say uh, that there is no 
uh, issues with whatever licensing mechanism you have. We have server license licenses or network licenses we call them. Uh, machine lock licenses is uh, another one, or the dongle licenses. As long as the software is licensed, it doesn't really matter what mechanism you've used to, to license uh, Global Mapper. Um, question about upgrading as well. Um, we had recommended that you, you use the most recent version, version 16.1. If you are on an older version, the question is uh, how, does, how does the upgrade process work? Um, if you're working with version 15 or any uh, instance of 15, whether 15.0, 15.1, or 15.2, um, and you want to get to, uh, up to version 16, it will be a separate installation. It does not upgrade your current version. It will install a separate installation. Um, so they, they do operate side by side. Um, the licensing is an upgrade license. Um, if you're using one version previously, it's a very uh, steeply discounted price to upgrade. But technically, it doesn't upgrade the software. It actually installs side by side. So it allows you that transition, if you like. If you need then to un uninstall the older version, you're certainly uh, uh, welcome to do that. Um, but uh, yeah, upgrading is, um, is uh, from an older version, uh, installs a new version of the software. Great. Thanks, David. Um, I'm going to go on and talk about our our vector digitizing tools. And here's a little example in the slide that shows that you can choose to fill polygon areas for closed areas in the summit superimposition or not. So it may be filled over on the global mapper side, but you can prevent it from doing that and obscuring your images on the summit evolution side. So that's your choice. There are several just little settings like this that change the superimposition view over uh, the summit stereo view just so that you can see things better. All right, we have a couple of digitizing tools. Now these are datum digitizing tools as opposed to global mapper digitizing tools, although of course all the global mapper tools are still available to you. But when you want to draw with Summit Evolution, then you'd want to use the Datum tool for 2D or 3D string or area. And the reason for that is that they're going to communicate with the Summit Evolution cursor. And Summit Evolution really becomes a 3D digitizer for Global Mapper. So instead of, if you think about just using a system mouse in Global Mapper, when you click, you're just clicking a 2D, you're changing your XY position, but you're not tracking a 3D elevation position. So Summit Evolution becomes a 3D digitizer, and it's tracking all three coordinate values. And these digitizing tools will take those 3D coordinates over and add them to the vector that you're digitizing in Global Mapper. So I'll, we can also place um, point objects such as spot elevations and add that elevation value to it. So here's just a little example of some spot elevations. And we have an erase object tool that you can activate from Summit Evolution, but of course you can also do that over on the Global Mapper side, so that's your choice. Oh, well, I'm going to go back one to this slide again. We have a close object and an open object tool that just lets you quickly add or subtract that closing vector from the endpoints of a line. So if perhaps you get some has buildings that are missing the last edge of the building, you could go in and use this tool to close your building. And then my slideshow now transitions to the industry examples. Does anyone have any questions about Summit itself before we do that? I can also transfer over and show Summit with Global Mapper at this point. And actually, I think I'll do that. Um, just a moment. Yeah, Alyssa, just looking at one question coming in here. Actually, it came in a while ago and I missed it. Uh, relates to... Uh, the display, um, do you require two monitors? In other words, are two monitors needed to obviously run the two applications, or do they, does one dock with the other? Um, I, I guess... That's I, a great... Sorry. Go ahead. 
I was just going to say, um, you know, the two applications are, are still going to be separate. Although the extension creates a bridge, if you like, um, they are still two applications. And unless I, I would assume that you would recommend your setup would probably be ideal for that uh, type of situation. Yeah, that's great timing for that question, too, because I just transferred over to a, a view with Summit and Global Mapper sharing a screen. So you see that I've positioned them roughly 50% each and if I had only one monitor I would probably just do that just size them so that I can see as much of one or the other as I can but we all know that we always run out of desktop space so I would recommend two screens or some people even connect three screens to their computer so that they have enough desktop space to deal with their other things their email and so on and they can have summit occupying the entire stereo monitor. Now monitor and place Summit on it so that you can view as much of the area as you'd like. But again here I've set it up so that they're sharing a screen and you can certainly do that. Yeah, uh, just, just one thing to add from the global mapper perspective, uh, if you are constrained by a single display or a single screen um, from within the view menu in Global Mapper, you do have options to turn off uh, some of those toolbars you see at the top of the screen. And obviously, if your use of Global Mapper is specifically uh, in conjunction with uh, with Summit Evolution, you'll not need all of those toolbars, uh, and those can certainly be disabled, which maximizes a little bit of the map view um, and allows you to you know, obviously gain most real estate from a, a relatively small working area. Okay, and I will mention if you one screen then it really needs to be a, a screen that is on the datum acceptable hardware list so if you go to our website and choose that support configurations it'll talk about the kind of hardware you need so this if you had one screen it would need to be capable of 120 Hertz refresh and be able to communicate with a a graphics card that's capable of displaying stereo with NVIDIA 3D Vision. And so if you had more than one screen, we don't have so many rules about the second screen or the third screen. But there are some considerations to get stereo to work on your, your main monitor. So, so what I've shown here is I have Summit shown here on the left and it has a stereo project loaded and I've loaded a vector file into Global Mapper and I've only put the vector file there but of course Global Mapper is capable of showing other types of ortho with this vector data and a little bit. Right now, I know I've been told that there's about a two second delay when I'm moving some evolution. So right now I'm moving the cursor. And right now you should see that cursor at 12 o'clock in that traffic circle in the center of the traffic circle. So I'd like to demonstrate that this really is a rarely change this view if I get the anaglyph mode. And some of you may be familiar with anaglyph mode. It's going to turn one image into a red. Do separate circles, and that's because my elevation, if the the cursor right now is not on the ground, and there, and when they're perfectly together, then that means that my cursor is on the ground, or and if in the stereo view, in the real stereo view, it looks as if the cursor is floating down and then just sitting right on the ground and I can tell that
So we suggest that you don't rely on the anaglyphs. On this, we have several settings options that I can choose how I want things to And here are some prune position settings that regulate how these vectors and then I can also begin to draw an object and I'll just area and I need to choose a layer for that too. I, I just have the default settings right here for Global Mapper, so this may look familiar to Global Mapper users. So I'm going to and I'd like it to be a closed area feature. I'm going to OK that. And I know this isn't a real here, but I'm just going to demonstrate digit object. Now, right now I've digitized points. my elevation. The next point will be at the elevator. And I would view this scenario and keep the cursor on the ground in my just so that's my little pretend object here at the wrong elevation. area over here just in Summit and over here in Global Mapper I've drawn a 3D closed area and every vertex here can have its own elevation. Uh, just uh, Lizzie, just to, to reiterate uh, this is obviously something we're broadcasting online so the actual uh, movement of the screen is a little bit jerky it doesn't go quite so smoothly but yeah, hopefully you're getting ideas to uh, how this works. Uh, a couple of questions. One comment and one question. The, the comment is uh, someone mentioned they have not seen 3D in a webinar before and uh, uh, thought that was pretty cool, I assume. Uh, another question about trial versions. Um, uh, tri are there trial versions of the uh, your software and of Global Mapper? Um, I can just answer that quickly. The Global Mapper side, yes, you can download the application and uh, activate a trial from within the registration window. We give you a free trial. Um, a uh, seven-day trial, or a 14-day trial, I'm sorry, within the application. Is there a trial version of uh, Summit, Summit uh, Evolution? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, we have a softlock demo that you arrange through your local reseller, or that might be Datum itself, depending on your geographic area. And we send you a softlock demo with the full features of the software that you requested. And you can try that for 30 days or however long you arrange for that demo to be, probably not more than 30 days. <laughs> and once your demo is over, then you decide to purchase the software, then we send you an actual hardware lock that has your more permanent license on it. But yes, we do soft lock demos quite often, and I believe that also works with the demo version of Global Mapper. Yeah, and you, the, the on the 14-day uh, the trial is the volume of data that can be exported. Uh, so you may run into that issue if you're doing a lot of exporting from the Global Mapper side. Uh, one more question while we have uh, co coordinate conversion. Uh, can Datum Global Mapper do the on-the-fly coordinate conversion with one Datum projection on the Datum, datum side and a different one on the Global Mapper side? Um, Alyssa, do you have any response to that or do we need to take that one offline and maybe follow up? later? Um, I, I will talk about coordinate conversions for a moment in Summit Evolution and the great version in Summit Evolution. So let's talk about this particular project that I'm showing. I have the same coordinate system set on 
map side and the summit evolution side. So this is a Nashville project in a state Nashville coordinate system. They have to match in order for the cursor to move around in the right area. Of, you know, it, it's just logical that I need to use the same coordinate system. But let's say that my original summit project wasn't in that coordinate system. Let's say it's in coordinates. But over here in Global Mapper, I want to use the Nashville system. coordinate version tool we have in Summit, and I would need to set my input coordinate system and my coordinate system. It's really nice that they're going to match exactly to your choices that you have. Vision is a blue marble product. So when I apply my coordinate conversion, in Summit, then the, the ground coordinates change, and I can make my Summit project match what I'm using in Global Mapper, and I'm sure the other way around. You have on your screen, in the uh, Global Mapper toolbar, there's a green button, which is essentially the gateway into the coordinate uh, transformation uh, process. Um, um, that basically opens up uh, the underlying a coordinate. Uh, I was looking for that license right now. Obviously, it's not oh. on your machine. So. Yeah, yeah. it looks like I'm missing my geographic calculator. Well, we'll have to get our sales folks on. <laughs> we'll have yeah. to get our sales folks yeah. on. So, yeah, the, the answer to the question is, um, yeah, obviously, recommendation that they're, they're both on the same system is uh, probably the best, uh, best response. Mm -hmm. So... Could you read the original question about that before? Did I, I don't know if I really answered the, what the person asked. So the question is, can Datum Global Mapper do on-the-fly coordinate conversion with one Datum projection, Datum, D-A-T-U-M, Datum projection uh -huh. on the Datum side, Datum side, and a different one on the Global Mapper? So in other words, uh, the question was, is it possible to have two different coordinate systems um, and work in, in that environment? All right, I think I'm going to tailor the answer I just gave. That, no, they should be exactly the same on both sides, but if you need to, you can change, you can do it. I hope that answers it better. Okay. Great. Um, I think I'm done demonstrating this global mapper interface for the moment, unless someone wants to see anything like placing spot elevations or they're, they're very similar. You would just position the cursor and then digitize. And we could return to our industry examples or, David, do you have anything you'd like to sure, add? Sure. I, I mean, I, I, I'm, it's great to see these questions coming in. I think it might be useful to go back and see some of those industry examples, especially for, again, for the audience who are maybe not as familiar with uh, some of the markets that you would serve. Some of the folks on the Global Mapper side, you know, some uh, perhaps if you've got some real-world examples, that would probably be very useful. Okay. Okay, we have a couple of industry examples here. Um, they were provided by by some of our clients, and I will say that because of the timing, they weren't necessarily digitized using Global Mapper, but this type of product could be made with Global Mapper. Um, this was a project where they did a topographic right-of-way mapping, and that was done by Gorn Donna and Associates. So if anyone from there is listening, thank you very much <laughs> for this example. Um, they photogrammetrically compiled topographic mapping for one-foot contour accuracy across approximately 5,052 acres. Final delivery included 2D and 3D planimetric topography vector files and orthophoto mosaic images at 6-inch pixel resolution. So what this is demonstrating is they're delivering both the imagery as orthophotos and the vector files that they can digitize in 3D using our software. And then we have another one here. 
and Wolpert. Again, if anyone from Wolpert is listening, thank you very much for this example. Uh, they use Summit Evolution to collect and process digital multispectral aerial imagery and LIDAR data for more than 40,000 square miles that make up the state of Ohio. The imagery was collected at a one-foot pixel resolution and delivered with 5,000 by 5,000 foot tiles along with LIDAR data and derived digital elevation models, DEMs. And as David said earlier, a lot of what Global Mapper does is dealing with LIDAR as well. And that's something that I didn't really talk about with Summit. Um, Summit has ways to view your LIDAR files or make the cursor track with your LIDAR files. And together with our landscape product, we can also edit and classify LIDAR files. And I believe that Global Mapper also has LIDAR classification options in it that maybe David can talk a little more yeah, about too. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a, certainly a work in progress. I um, mean, you know, it's certainly a development priority for ours. We have instituted uh, procedures for automatically detecting ground points. Uh, autom automatically detecting vegetation, automatically detecting buildings as well. So, um, yeah, we're certainly going in that direction as well. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of options together with Landscape and Global Mapper um, and Summit Evolution itself. And whether or not you have the Landscape product, we can rewrite last files and classify them and display them and edit them. So whatever you possibly need to do with your land, your LIDAR files, um, you probably can find a solution within these two products. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I'm seeing a question come in here, uh, Alyssa. Um, can we download DEM using Global Mapper and push them into the Summit Vector Workspace for editing and ortho photo production? Um, I'm going to say yes. <laughs> um, so you probably can download from those options that David showed earlier. Yeah. I'm, I'm assuming though the asker of this question again is coming from the Global Mapper side and they have probably already figured this one out in Global Mapper. Certainly any of those online data sources um, you know, you can render the data in real time, you can stream the data, but our workflow typically we recommend capturing that, exporting it basically to, again, any of the supported uh, elevation formats, including .dem, um, .dted, um, and a number of other formats as well. So I guess the question would be passing that over to, uh, to, uh, to you is whether those f f files can then be integrated into, uh, into the uh, Summit workspace. Yes, and then you would decide whether you want to keep them in Global Mapper. And if you were showing those points in Global Mapper, they'd be superimposed on the summit side. And then if you can export those into the different industry standard formats, you can then further deal with them in summit by displaying them or, um, again, editing them would be more our product called landscape but I think that you could do the editing in Global Mapper as well. Sure. And, and the thing about, the nice thing about showing the LiDAR data in Global Mapper and superimposing it in Summit is that you can tell whether these points are on the ground or not. <laughs> and, and this is very helpful because a lot of times when you're dealing with LiDAR, you've got all these points and sure they look great and it looks like they go <coughs> up the wall and around the building and so on, but you don't know whether they're really on the ground and if you can match this up to some stereo imagery, you can tell whether it's on the ground. And that's proven very helpful to a lot of people that they know that this LiDAR is matching the imagery that was taken at the same time. I hope that answers that question. Yeah, I think I think uh, the yeah. word that comes to mind is interoperability. Certainly, the formats yes. that can be exported from Global Mapper, you know, can certainly be worked with in in uh, in uh, your application. So, yeah. Great. All right. The only thing I have left here is a recap, and we're just 
reiterating that Summit is a st photogrammetric stereo plotter, so you're seeing everything in stereo. Um, and again, if you purchase either Summit Evolution or a support contract for your existing Summit Evolution and you install our software, if it sees Global Mapper on the computer at the time, it will install the extension for it. And then it's your choice to use the extension or not. Um, Datum Capture is the name of the interface between the Stereo Plotter and Global Mapper. So we call it Datum Capture for Global Mapper. And then it's very easy to activate the extension. It's almost just a, a method of just installing it and checking on the checkbox to use the extension. And then once you have the Global Mapper extension for Summit Evolution, then you and look at 3D vectors, whether they appear to be on the ground or not in your 3D imagery. So that's all I have for, for the PowerPoint part of that. And if anybody has any more questions about how these two work together, I'd be happy to take more questions. Yeah, and, and the questions have been coming in uh, pretty steadily. Um, I, I'm going to, uh, in a couple of minutes here, show you a kind of final PowerPoint, and it's going to have a couple of mm -hmm. email addresses, uh, both for, for Datum and for, for Blue Marble. If you have any follow-up questions, um, certainly. Or more technical stuff as well, if that's required as well. So, so I guess it looks like questions are pretty much dried up. I'm going to switch back again. You should now be seeing the uh, email addresses. Um, thank you all for attending today. Thank you for taking an interest in kind of this. I'm going to re refer back to the first question comment that came in. Thank you for, for taking an interest in our marriage, <laughs> as it was referred to. A marriage made in heaven. Um, we really appreciate their interest, and it's certainly the, the uh, technology and the, the functionality that uh, Datum brings to play certainly lends itself to, to what Global Mapper has to offer. So it's a, it is a perfect uh, uh, combination of technologies. Uh, Alyssa, thank you very much for uh, volunteering your time to share this information. You're welcome, David, and I really appreciated being able to talk to everybody about this. Excellent. Well, this, this session is being recorded. Um, uh, both, I'm assuming, Datum and ourselves will eventually have this available. Those of you who su subscribe to the uh, uh, Blue Marble um, uh, web webinars will have a notification that this is available online, and I'm assuming that, uh, Alyssa, you'll have this available on your website as well. Yes, we certainly will. We'll get that up there very soon. <laughs> Great. Well, thank, thank you once again. Thank you all for attending, and thank you, Alyssa. You're welcome. Thank you, too.